Hey, it's Chris with Acting Creative, and this is a handwoven experience, episode 49. And in this episode, we are going to talk all about how to read a weaving draft. Because once you know how to read the draft, the world is your oyster. Anything is possible. So, Let's start things off with an example. This is the example I'm going to use today, and it's from uh, page 40 of Anne Dixon's book, The Hand Weaver's Pattern Directory. I love this book. It's geared specifically towards a four shaft loom, which is what I have here. So everything in this book can be done on this type of loom. So like I said, this is page 40. It's a tabby and twill mix is what this specific pattern is. And a pattern, a weaving draft, is really like reading music. It's a visual representation of where everything goes in a pattern. So one of the things that I wanted to stress today is that reading a draft like this is really just like sitting in the draft. I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's laid out visually just like you're sitting at the loom. And we're visual people, so let's make sure that we understand where everything is supposed to go in relationship to this lovely piece of paper. So first of all, this whole section at the top, see there are four rows? That refers to each of the four shafts. If you have a pattern that has more than four rows, that means you're looking at a pattern that requires probably an eight shaft, or more than that if you're really getting fancy. So four shafts right here. And the way that this reads is that the row that's at the bottom is closest to you. So again, imagine you're sitting like this. This shaft refers to this row that's closest. Okay. Now, Ann Dixon does something which I find really cool. And you just have to kind of watch the instructions for each pattern draft that you're reading because hopefully they'll give you a few hints as to the orientation of how they wrote it. But she does this really cool thing right here where she has an arrow and then a little kind of curly cue. And that means that's the direction you're supposed to go when you're reading it and then where to repeat, which is very handy, makes it very easy to follow. So in this case, she has us going from right to left and our very first one is way at the top. So that means that I am going to thread a yarn through shaft number four and then number three and then number two and number one. So I'm making kind of a diagonal pattern. And because we're repeating it over and over again, if I were to lift up my warp yarns, they would all look four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one ad nauseum as you go through the whole entire project. So that is the first section of our weaving pattern. Now we're gonna go down below and talk about the treadling, which is this section. It kind of looks like a crossword puzzle. This portion right here refers to how our treadles, which are the pedals below, how they connect to our shafts. Now, in a four shaft loom, you will typically have six treadles or pedals down below. And they do that so that you have four for the pattern, and then you have two for tabby weave or plain weave just gives you a lot of options when you're doing a pattern like this. And you can even see that I've got six columns and that refers to each of the treadles below. So let's uh, duck down below the loom and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here I am sitting below the loom on the floor, just me and the dust bunnies. But I wanna make sure you understand the second part of reading a pattern draft. So. Let's get to it. So here's our draft that we started with. We started off talking about this section and now we're in this little kind of, we'll say crossword puzzle kind of looking section. So this gives us instructions for how to tie up our treadles. Let me make sure you understand what that means. This is a four shaft loom, which you saw above, right? But I've got six treadles, right? Now, these are my lambs here that are connected. These little metal pieces take it all the way to the top. So. Each of these relates to one of the shafts up above, but we have the ability to connect one pedal to any or all of them, 
which is lovely. It gives us a lot of freedom when we're doing our weaving pattern. So we want to make sure that we follow our instructions here, our visual instructions for how to tie them up. And here's how we do it. So remember when we were sitting up top, we talked about how this, these rows connect to each of the shafts. Well, that extends over here as well. So if you look over here, we have four rows as well to connect each of the shafts, but we also have six columns, which relates to our six treadles, right? Again, if you're sitting in the pattern, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are six rows. So we have instructions for each of our treadles. So for our very first treadle, it shows shaft one and shaft three. So this is gonna be this treadle right here. So I've taken my little tie ups and I have tied them up for one and three. So when I press this down, shafts one and three are gonna lift, okay? The one right next to it is gonna be two and four. Again, I took my little ties and I made sure they're all connected to two and four. Are you seeing the pattern here? <laughs> pattern with the pattern. Yeah. Anyways, so, so this is how you're gonna do your tie-ups down here. And what that does is that makes sure that when you get to throwing the shuttle, you don't have to worry. This has already been set up for you correctly because you've been down below the loom with all the tie-ups. So let's head back up and finish out the weaving pattern draft conversation up above. Let's go. Okay, so for the last part of our equation, the last section in our draft, this one right here, this gives us the roadmap for our shuttle. Which yarns lift when? So as I mentioned before, Anne does a lovely job of giving you specific instructions. She's got a little red line that points up and there's a little curly cue that tells you where to repeat. So to read this, we wanna start at the bottom and go up and just kind of keep repeating that pattern over and over again. So, you know, we did all of our tie ups for our treadles down below. So we can trust that that is all in the right place. So now all we have to do is follow the order right here. So our first one is this one right here, which all of these columns relate to the treadles down below. So again, if we're sitting here, this one on the far left is gonna be the treadle on the far left. Okay, so that's our very first one right there. So we're gonna give that a lift, toss our shuttle. Let's see what our next one is. Our next one is the going up the third from the left. So I'm gonna move that down. By the way, notice third from the left, if we go all the way up, it's one and two should be lifted. And if you look at our loom, look at that. One and two are lifted. So we'll toss our shuttle back the other way. And then you just keep, just keep pushing down the treadles, tossing the shuttle over and over again. Now, a couple notes to go with this. Um, Anne has um, all color in her book, which is lovely because, you know, visual people, we love the colors. So she actually shows how to create this exact look by having colors as well. So she's got green for all her warp yarns and kind of this orange color for all her weft yarns going this direction. A lot of drafts will just be black. They won't actually show the colors, but Anne takes an extra step, which we love her for that. The other thing too is that you'll see little numbers in her boxes here and normally it's just all ones but on occasion you'll have it'll say three or five or something like that and that's something you'll deal with when you get into overshot or something of that effect and what you'll need to do is make sure you look at the notes and it'll say you want to throw a tabby in between each of the pattern so the yarn doesn't just keep pulling right out because we've all been there when we've left the two same two shafts up twice in a row and the yarn just pulls right out so watch the numbers if you're doing a twill or a plain weave you're going to be just fine so many of them it'll just be the number one but on occasion you'll get into something fun and you'll have uh, bigger numbers in there which means you'll leave the same shafts up but you'll put a tabby in between 
hopefully that doesn't get too complicated for you. But I hope this has been a nice overview of how to sit in a weaving pattern draft and read it like nobody's business. You can take on the world now that you know how to we read. <laughs> it's hard to say that. How to read a weaving pattern draft. So go forth, do all the complicated things, enjoy yourself, and have a great week. Oh, and of course, happy weaving.